Hello people, in this video let us look at the clinical features of trachoma. So uh, in the previous video what have we looked at? We looked at what trachoma is, right? So we started off with trachoma. We saw that trachoma in Greek means rough, right? So basically it is caused by chlamydia trachomatis, the serotype ABC, okay? So this is also called as hyperendemic blinding trachoma because trachoma is a leading cause of preventive blindness, second to cataract, okay? So here the transmission is I to I. So you have seen all this in the last video isn't it then so hope you have seen all this then we saw what causes chlamydia uh, trachoma it is chlamydia trachomatis right it is a bacteria <clears throat> this was earlier called as egyptian ophthalmia it is uh, nothing but keratoconjunctivitis chronic keratoconjunctivitis means it affects both the cornea and the conjunctiva okay so basically you will see follicular and papillary response of the conjunctival tissue. That is the photo here that you saw that there will be follicular and papillary response, right? Then what else we saw about it? Basically how trachoma works, it uh, uh, it causes some cytoplasm, uh, intra cytoplasm inclusion bodies called as HP bodies. That is Habelstader Provazek bodies, okay? Now, uh, trachoma, how it spreads, we saw it is more in uh, infancy and childhood, more, but it is there in all ages. In dusty and uh, dry weather, it will be more, and discharge will be the source of infection, eye to eye, we already told you. It is seen more in Africa and Asia. Trachoma is responsible for 15 to 20% of the world's blind blindness, second only to cataract. So, cataract is the first cause of blindness, second is trachoma. It spreads directly by vector and also by material transfer like uh, fomites, right, towel, handkerchief, by uh, these kind of applicators which are shared between people etc. Then, <clears throat> now here we have come, this is what we want to look at in this video, the clinical features of trachoma. So basically there are two phases here, a phase of active trachoma and phase of cicatricial trachoma. Okay, what is cicatricial healing? That's what we saw uh, earlier, right? So phase of active trachoma, let us look at. So basically the incubation period of active trachoma varies from 5 to 22 this incubation period of active trachoma varies from 5 to 22 days. Onset of disease is usually insidious, right? So it is um, insidious means what? Gradual, gradual in, uh, onset, right? Insidious means gradual in onset, okay? So the onset of disease is insidious, however, rarely it can be acute it can be sudden also okay can be acute also so it can be sudden also so it can be subacute or acute okay so here we are concerned with what now the symptoms what if you if a patient comes what symptoms will they present with so basically there can be presence or absence of secondary bacterial infection okay so there can be presence or absence so leave that now so, in the absence of secondary infection, a pure trachoma, how will a pure trachoma be? There will be for, foreign body sensation. So, mild foreign body sensation will be there. Occasional lacrimation will be there. So, pay attention here to the symptoms, guys. So, symptoms will be like mild foreign body sensation, lacrimation, right? Some tears, right? Slight stickiness of the lids. So, the lids will kind of stick to each other. I don't know if you have ever experienced a conjunctivitis, uh, but as a child I did have and you can feel that stickiness, you know, that uh, because of the discharge, right? And there will be mucoid discharge. Here they are talking about a little discharge, scanty mucoid discharge, not, not much, okay? Stickiness because of this discharge usually, okay? Then uh, what were uh, these symptoms? Basically, you should understand that in presence of secondary bacterial infection, there will be some other symptoms, okay? Now, let's move on, guys, to the signs. Signs of uh, conjunctival, um, signs means you have to see here two signs here, conjunctival signs and corneal signs. What is the difference between the symptom and what is the sign? Sign is something that you will find, right? Now, let us say conjunctival signs. So what will you see in conjunctiva? So, basically, the conjunctival signs will be like the upper tarsal and forniceal conjunctiva will be congested, okay? So, there will be congestion. Congestion where in the upper tarsal in the forniceal conjunctiva. So, you know the parts of the conjunctiva, don't you? So, here they are saying watanol will get affected. There will be congestion in the upper tarsal 
and the fornicial, right? In the fornicial uh, conjunctiva, there will be some congestion. Okay. Then what are they saying? Conjunctival follicles. Follicles look like boiled sago greens and are commonly seen on upper tarsal conjunctiva and fornix. So every time they're saying the upper, upper um, tarsal conjunctiva. So you can see here sago greens, boiled sago greens. You know what boiled sago greens are? Sago greens, you know, they call this as sabaki. Not sure what they call in your language, but yeah. So this is sago greens, which is boiled. Okay. So that is how they are saying this looks. Okay. Then what else are they saying? So these are the conjunctival follicles. So there will be congestion. Then there will be conjunctival follicles. So let us look at the points here. Congestion where upper tarsal and fornicial conjunctiva. Okay. You should see that upper tarsal and fornicial conjunctiva. Then what else? So corny uh, conjunctival follicles will be there which resemble boiled sago grains. Okay. They look like what? Boiled sago grains commonly seen on the upper tarsal conjunctiva and fornix. Again, same location. They may be present in the lower fornix, plica semilunaris and caruncle. So they can be present in all these places. They are saying not only just the conjunctiva. So if this is the eye and this is the, wait, and this is the nose, let us say. Okay. So they are saying they can be in the lower fornix. Also, they can be there. They can be in the plica semilunaris and even the caruncle. So in all these places, what can be there? The follicles can be there. Okay. So even in the bulbar conjunctiva, sometimes there can be uh, these follicles. Okay. So pay attention here. So um, basically, if this is the eye, right? This is the eyelid. <clears throat> this is the cornea, let's say. So you have the palpebral conjunctiva, conjunctival fornix. So all these places are usually affected. They're saying bulbar conjunctiva can be affected rarely. Okay. The follicles can be present even there. What you are looking at here is what guys? The palpebral conjunctiva, right? The upper palpebral conjunctiva, especially the tarsal. Here they are saying follicles may be seen on, on bulbar conjunctiva. This is pathognomic of trachoma. So if it is there on bulbar conjunctiva, then you can sh be sure that it is going to be, <clears throat> it is going to be uh, trachoma. If it is there on bulbar conjunctiva, then you can be sure that it is trachoma. Yes, is this going into your head? What are we looking at today? Today we are looking at trachoma. What in trachoma? Clinical features, right? What are we looking at? Acute, in the acute condition or in an active trachoma basically. In active trachoma, what are the signs? Conjunctival signs, right? Now, how will these follicles be? The structure they are talking about. These follicles are formed <coughs> uh, due to aggregation of lymphocytes and other cells in the adenoid layer. So, they are saying that why these uh, follicles are formed? Because of lymphocytes in the adenoid layer. Adenoid layer already had lymphocytes. So you remember the adenoid layer guys. So in adenoid layer, what did you see? There are a lot of lymphocytes. So the follicles are formed due to scattered aggregation of these lymphocytes right in the adenoid layer. Central part of each follicle is made up of mononuclear histiocytes. So in every follicle, the central part is made up of what? Mononuclear histiocytes. Then there are few lymphocytes and large multinucleated cells called Leber cells. So they are talking about some L-E-B-E-R cells, okay. Leber cells. Where will be there? In the center of the follicle, okay. What about the cortical part? The cortical part of the follicle is made up of a zone of lymphocytes. Again here lymphocytes which are showing active proliferation. Blood vessels are present in most in, in the most peripheral part you will have blood vessels. So this is a follicle, okay. Then. So let us move on guys. So you understood what Leber cells are, right? So in the follicle structure, where are the Leber cells? In the center. In the follicle, in the center, you will have the Leber cells, okay? Multinucleated cells, large multinucleated cells called Leber cells, okay? Now, <clears throat> we are still looking at the signs of the conjunctiva. What and we saw in the periphery there will be blood vessels. You saw that in later stages signs of necrosis are also seen. So in a follicle in later stage there can be necrosis. Presence of Leber cells. Guys, pay attention here. Leber cells is very typical of uh, trachoma. Necrosis is a very typical sign of trachoma. In the follicle if there is necrosis then it is definitely a trachoma follicle. Okay. Then. You saw that if bulbar conjunctiva is involved, if there are follicles in bulbar conjunctiva, that is a pathognomic 
characteristic of trachoma. It is pathognomic of trachoma. So, of trachoma, what and all you saw things? If it is bulbar conjunctiva has follicles, if liver cells are present in the center of the follicle, if there is necrosis in the follicle, all these are very typical of what? Of trachoma. Okay. So, we are here. <clears throat> so, basically, follicles in bulbar conjunctiva then follicles and bulbar conjunctiva liver cells necrosis all these are very typical of trachoma okay then one more point is there here guys in conjunctiva papillary hyperplasia so, here they are saying in the tarsal conjunctiva, there will be this papillae which are reddish flat topped raised areas which give red and velvety appearance to the tarsal conjunctiva. So, basically red and velvety appearance of tarsal conjunctiva is due to papillae, okay, which are reddish flat topped raised areas okay so look at the image from the textbook guys papillary hyperplasia of the tarsal conjunctiva each of the papillae right guys it consists of a core of numerous dilated blood vessels surrounded by lymphocytes and covered by hypertrophic epithelium so what will you see here papillae will have dilated blood vessels so it will be very red and velvety you can understand okay what is going to be red and velvety the tarsal conjunctiva okay here you are seeing tarsal conjunctiva have follicles imagine without the follicles it will just appear red okay guys we will do one thing we have to still look at the corneal signs of active trachoma let's look at that and in the next video we will meet for um, this, this guys the face of cicatricial trachoma Corneal signs of trachoma means trachoma is keratoconjunctivitis. So, it will affect the cornea. Kerato means cornea, right? It will affect the cornea also. What will be the things you will have to mention here? Superficial keratitis, Herbert follicles, progressive panis and corneal ulcer. Okay, first listen to what this is. Superficial keratitis. Inflammation of the cornea, right? So, that will be usually in the upper part. Okay, then. Herbert follicles refer to typical follicles present in the limbal area. So, you can see around the cornea here. So, these are very similar to the other conjuncti uh, conjunctival follicles. Then coming to progressive panis guys. So, infiltration of the cornea with uh, associated with vascularization seen in the upper part. So, the so basically let us say this is the eye. Okay. And here you have the cornea. Here there will be infiltration into the cornea and the upper side with vascularization that is panis. Okay. So, the vessels are superficial and lie between the epithelium and the Bowman's membrane. So, do you know the epithelium? Do you know the Bowman's membrane of the cornea? So, of the cornea here you can see the non-keratinized stratified epithelium. And where is the Bowman's membrane? This is the Bowman's membrane. Right? So, basically between these two there will be vascularization. Is it? Is, is that what they are saying? The vascularization, the vessels are superficial. They lie between the epithelium and the Bowman's membrane. Yes, they lie between the epithelium and the Bowman's membrane. That will be the panis. Okay. So, did you understand? Progressive panis. Okay. Later on, the Bowman's membrane also gets destroyed because of this panis. Panis in active trachoma is progressive in which infiltration of cornea is ahead of vascularization. So, infiltration of cornea first and then vascularization. Okay. Then coming to corneal ulcer. So, it may develop sometimes corneal ulcer at the advancing edge of panis. At the advancing edge of panis, right, if this is panis, at the advancing edge of panis, there can be a corneal ulcer, right. Such ulcers are usually shallow and they can then become chronic and indolent. What do you mean by indolent? Indolent actually means lazy, okay. So, let us just revise what we have seen so far in uh, trachoma active. So, we started off with uh, the clinical features of trachoma right so basically what we saw in this clinical features we saw there are two phases phase of active trachoma phase of cicatricial trachoma so in active trachoma you saw that uh, uh, what and all have you seen there can be mild foreign body sensation occasional lacrimation 
slight stickiness of lids and scanty mucoid discharges. Look at this, all the words here are mild, occasional lacrimation, slight stickiness of the lids, scanty mucoid discharge. Everything is little, little, little only. Now coming to the signs, conjunctiva, there will be congestion, there will be follicles, how the follicles will be in the center, how they will be there, what is very typical of trachoma, the follicles and bulbar conjunctiva, the liver cells in the center of these follicles, necrosis in these follicles are all these uh, signs of trachoma. Papillary hyperplasia will be there. Okay, basically remember we are talking about the signs in the um, signs of trachoma. Okay, symptoms we spoke of are in the absence of secondary uh, bacterial infection. If there is secondary bacterial infection, then the symptoms will be very similar to acute mucopurulent conjunctivitis. Okay, like a bacterial conjunctivitis. Now, then we saw the signs uh, of uh, cornea. We saw superficial keratitis, Herbert follicles, progressive pannus, corneal ulcer. Okay, so remember where did you see Herbert pannus, progressive pannus in active trachoma. Okay. Look at this image of uh, pannus, guys. Can you see the vascularization here in the upper part of cornea?